Well, what can I tell you? We went 0 for 3 today. Couldn't give away any money, but I hope you'll be watching tomorrow, and maybe we'll be able to give $16,000 away to you. Be watching, and make sure you know that $16,000 word. PM Magazine tonight should be entertaining. Linda Evans from Dynasty is on, and a man with 112 girlfriends, believe it or not. That should be interesting. Tomorrow, the movie Telly Savalas, Gina Lola Brigida, it's called Bona Sarah Mrs. Campbell, another comedy from 1969. Hope you'll be watching. Hope you'll meet me here on the $16,000 station. Tonight in the news, Centralia gets some advice from Love Canal. Getting together after 138 years, I'm Karen Hart. Newswatch 16 update is next. Everything you want to know about outdoor life, Saturday. This is the news station, WNEP 16. Good evening, I'm Karen Hart. Nolan Johannes has the night off. She knows what it's like to try and get Uncle Sam moving. And that's why Lois Gibbs went to Centralia tonight. Ms. Gibbs helped the people from Love Canal, New York, get help from the government after toxic waste were found there. The people of Centralia have been living with an underground mine fire for more than 21 years now. And Ms. Gibbs told the residents tonight the only way to get action from the government is to make a lot of noise by organizing protests. The government has promised to set up a task force to look into Centralia's problems. Night Beat reporter Bob Costantini asked the people tonight if they believe Uncle Sam's promise for help. Interior Secretary James Watts says Centralia can have money for relocation if a real need to move is proven. Uh, from his reactions before, it wasn't uh, too positive, but I think maybe he's, co he's come around. I hope so. The mere fact that the Centralia mine fire has come up in Washington seems to have brightened the outlook of some homeowners hoping for government help. They have to do something now. They, they, can't, ignore, they can't ignore Centralia anymore. I guess that is to the point now they have to do something. The government's idea for doing something is a task force set up to get information about the need to relocate the people of Centralia. It will take a little longer. They're going to have to meet now. We expected everything to happen yesterday. Do you think another task force is needed? Not really. I think we had enough task forces and committees and everything else. I think now we should have a little action. How to get action from big government is why Lois Gibbs is here. She can relate her experiences in getting Love Canal evacuated. While signing her book about a two-year fight for relocation, Lois Gibbs says she's skeptical of Secretary Watt's words. The statement is full of holes. If the people can prove something, if the people can demonstrate they have a problem, if the people can, burn the proof is not on the people. Burn the proof should be on the government to prove to these people that there's no reason for them to move. Love Canal was condemned by chemicals under the ground coming up. Here in Centralia, it's a mine fire underground with the smoke coming out. In the end, the results could be the same. A ghost town. Bob Costantini, Newswatch 16, Centralia. In Taylor tonight, some people are worried about a landfill that's leaking some sort of liquid. Newswatch 16 took these photographs of the old Scranton City landfill in Taylor earlier this summer. As you can see, a colored liquid is seeping from the dump. Taylor Borough Council said tonight it will look into the concerns. Right now, no one knows what the liquid is, and the Department of Environmental Resources hasn't checked into it yet. Concerns about the quality of fire protection in Hazleton have eased up tonight. Volunteer firemen in that Luzerne County city had threatened to stop responding to fire calls if the city didn't give in to several demands. As Newswatch 16's Bob Reynolds reports, the firemen have changed their minds, at least for now. The safety and welfare of the people who live and work in Hazleton is hanging in the balance. Volunteer firemen decided not to strike later this week in return for the city's promise to reopen two firehouses. The firehouses closed because of a money crunch. If the 125 volunteers walked out, the city's firefighting force would be made up of three paid firemen. The paid firemen, I don't think they have enough numbers to take care of things. They need the volunteers. They should because for the for the better of the city, right? I think it's a good idea that they should get back. But the truce between the city and its volunteer firemen is fragile. It could come apart at any time, and some say put lives on the line. The problem is, was extremely distressing this summer when fully 50% of the equipment in the city was shut down, 50% of the apparatus. And we believe that that's too dangerous for the city. We believe it's too dangerous for the volunteers, and that's why we're at this crisis situation. If we would have had a second fire, we may not have had 
anybody responding to that fire, second fire. So far, the city's been able to get enough money to keep the firehouses open until the end of this year. But no one's really sure if there will be enough money in the city's budget next year to keep the volunteers manning the hoses. The problem with the city's firemen may just be the tip of the iceberg. For several years, Hazleton has been faced with a severe money crunch. One high city official tells me that next year may not be an exception. The city may look at the possibility of raising taxes or cutting services to make ends meet. Bob Reynolds, Newswatch 16, Hazleton. Some help is on the way for people concerned about the safety of exit 57W in Scranton. For years, people who live at the bottom of the exit ramp off Interstate 81 have been concerned about truck accidents. Just last month, a truck went out of control and crashed at the bottom of the hill. Well, now PennDOT and the city have agreed to put in a mandatory pull-off ramp along the exit. All trucks coming down the exit will be required to stop at the ramp. Residents of the Kaiser Valley had been hoping to ban trucks altogether, but some are willing to give the pull-off ramp a try. It's, it's, it's that they stop. They probably stop. The rumble strip is all good. Didn't work. So maybe this here will work. PennDOT hopes to have the pull-out ramp in place in about two weeks to prevent more truck crashes in the Scranton neighborhood. There will be school in the Nanakoke Area School District tomorrow. At a meeting today, the teachers decided not to strike, at least not until another negotiating session is held next week. The teachers and school board have been involved in a contract dispute now for almost two years. There's a bitter dispute over schools going on in northern Wayne County, but it's not between teachers and school officials. It's among parents. For years, kids from Lakewood have been bused to nearby Hancock, New York. But now some parents have decided to send their kids to a more modern school in Honesdale, about 25 miles away. As Newswatch 16's Dan Fiorucci reports, some parents are worried their kids will be forced to make the long trip. Dwayne Giles and his neighbors removed their youngsters from classes at Hancock High this fall and sent them to Pennsylvania's Honesdale High instead. The action has caused deep resentment among other parents in northern Wayne County who now fear that because of it, bus service to their favorite high school could be cut off. And then they'll be forced to send their youngsters to Honesdale, too. We're talking about 50 miles round trip, and those roads are hilly, they're narrow, and in the wintertime, they are simply treacherous. And I certainly don't want to risk my child's life on that road 50 miles when there's a perfectly good high school 10 miles away in Hancock, New York. Dwayne Giles and his friends say fears of the entire northern Wayne County School District losing bus service to New York are unfounded. They say all they're trying to do is what's best for their own kids. I personally do not feel that we are hurting anyone. We are, as parents, it is our duty to provide our children with the best education we possibly can. And I feel that Honesdale High School can do this for our children. In the meantime, the busing of students to both Honesdale and Hancock is continuing. It will go on unless the parents against it can stop it in court. Dan Fiorucci, Newswatch 16, Preston. It's a coming together of parishioners in one Columbia County community tonight. It all started 138 years ago when two churches split up because of a language barrier. Some spoke German, the others English. Well, tonight they were reunited. Those belonging to St. John's Church made a procession to downtown Catawissa, where they met up with members of St. Matthew's Church. It was a sad moment because St. Matthew's is closing down, but a joyous occasion since the parishioners will all be together again. members will meet at the old St. John's, now called the Christ United Evangelical Lutheran Church of Catawissa. Next, meteorologist Tom Clark bundles up in the backyard. How high will you try? $16,000 can be yours weekdays at 4. Well, earlier tonight, Tom Clark went home to get a sweater, so mm -hmm. you know it must be pretty chilly in the backyard. <laughs> How cold is it out there, Tom? 
Well, uh, uh, Karen, there is a definite sensation of autumn in the backyard tonight. Jacket and sweater, folks, it's getting quite cool. As a matter of fact, many thermometers now across the countryside of northeastern Pennsylvania register in the 40s. And in some of the coldest mountain valleys of north central Pennsylvania, it is now about 39 degrees. Let me show you what it is now in this backyard. We have a half moon very low in the western sky now, down to 52 degrees at the moment. The humidity, well, there it is. You got your wind at about east uh, seven miles per hour, and the atmosphere now exerts enough weight to make the barometer read 30.21 inches of mercury. High today was 71 in the backyard. That's about two degrees below normal. And the low last night was 48. It'll get colder than that tonight. Records 92 and 34, set back in 1911. And in the background there, we have a couple of people raking apples collecting some apples in the wheelbarrow, and that was this afternoon in Shaytown, just outside of Nanakoke. Now, let's have a look at the winds at 40,000 feet. They have a lot to do with weather patterns over the U.S., and late last week, they were blowing from uh, the southwest up to over Canada, and that allowed all the hot air to come in over the weekend with uh, temperatures well into the 90s. But look at the change that has taken place this week. Jet stream winds further south and blowing in towards Pennsylvania and up into New England. And uh, this shift in upper air winds has allowed a huge chunk of cool, dry Canadian air to plow southward and now uh, to dominate our weather pattern, uh, well, right through the middle of this week. Now, here's what Newswatch 16's color satellite photograph looks like. We have the cloud cover offshore. That was all the cloudiness and rain we had yesterday. It's now moving out to sea. Still some rain just east of the Carolinas now, but here is that chunk of Canadian air. You can see the clarity to it, and uh, we'll have brilliant sunshine here tomorrow as this air mass moves southeastward under those steering current winds right in over Pennsylvania. It is raining now across uh, Minnesota and Iowa ahead of this storm system here. You can see the swirl of clouds with it, winds blowing counterclockwise around that storm system. And this rain area is moving eastward at about 30 miles per hour. And we'll begin to see the clouds from that storm system. And a little bit of rain here, perhaps as early as Friday night and again on Saturday. But this storm system moving eastward with those jet stream winds, and we will see some sunshine before the weekend is through, for sure. Here's our forecast for tonight. It looks like this clear, dark skies out there, lots of star shine, and cold. Not cool, not chilly, but cold by morning. Knox in Wyoming County, 37 degrees. My forecast low for tonight, 38 in Canton, 40 out there in Hawley in Wayne County, about 46 below in Bloomsburg, 48 in Pottsville, and it's getting cold tonight. Now here for tomorrow, plenty of deep blue sky, azure blue, fresh air to go with it. It'll be a terrific day for breathing outside, for sure. 66 in Montrose, about 69 in Edwardsville, 67 in Weatherly, about 72 in Middleburg, the high tomorrow in Williamsport, 69 degrees. The northerly breeze will continue in the afternoon. Could be a little bit of river fog tomorrow morning, 45 in town. The record low is 32, said way back in 1902. We won't break that. Beautiful tomorrow, excellent day for joggers, 69 degrees in the afternoon. Now clouding up on Friday, a couple of showers into Saturday morning. Then the storm system moves east. The sunshine returns on Sunday. It'll be a pretty nice weekend, especially on Sunday. But Karen, uh, a lot of sunshine and fresh air tomorrow. Don't be surprised if you feel more energetic and more alert mentally. Oh, good. I yeah. hope so. Something to look forward to. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, Tom. <laughs> and coming up, Tim Carlson in for a Joe Zone, an inside look into the Scranton Eagles on the road to the playoffs. Sports when we come back. Everything from whitewater to black powder to beavers, biking, and bows, from copperheads to whitetails to casting, calling, and crows. You'll see stalking fish, fixing poles, rainbow trout, and snowy owls, setting traps, drilling holes, earthworms, and waterfowl. Whether you're a fan of the Eagles, Browns, Bears, or Giants, or of Joe and Stan and the Mountain Man, or some Tom Duck, or Harry, watch hiking, frying, riding, tying, skiing, and flying on Pennsylvania Outdoor Life, Saturday at 7. Tim Carlson is here for Joe Zone today because Joe Zone is on special assignment. If you can call it that, I think he had a pretty good time at it, too. He was the I hope so. MC of the Pennsylvania Wildlife Federation Banquet in Hershey. So we hope it went well for him. I'm sure they're good. probably still having a good time right about now. Probably. And Maybe we won't not? see him tomorrow either. Who knows? Uh, no, he'll be here. Uh, <laughs> he better be anyway. There's the sweep. The Phils 9-5 in the first game. Phillies 5-0 over Montreal in the second. 
Bystrom with a five-hit shutout in that second game. The Phils are up by a game over the Pirates. The Expos are now on 30 game and a half back. Speaking of the Pirates, they defeated the Cubs 6-3 this evening. St. Louis over New York 2-1. The Cards are two and a half back. Also in the National League, Cincinnati over Atlanta 6-4. And the Dodgers lost to Houston 4-2, so the Braves are still four back. San Francisco, San Diego, no score in the fourth inning. The Yankees won again, 4-1 over the Brewers. The Yanks stay seven back. Gidry winning number 19. The Brewers are 10 and a half, and they're gone. Goodbye. Baltimore and Boston, you see there. American League, Detroit over Cleveland, 5-0. Minnesota won Chicago, nothing. Kansas City, California, no score, top of the third. Toronto, Seattle, 1-1, top of the third. Texas, Oakland, no score in the top of the third. Well, we've got one of the top five semi-pro football teams in the country right here in our area in the form of the Scranton Eagles. And again, this year, they're headed into the Empire League playoffs. But there's one more important date for the birds this Sunday at Scranton's Memorial Stadium. It'll be a two-part test this Sunday when the Scranton Eagles meet the Syracuse Americans in the regular season finale. Part one involves the players on the field. Syracuse, the only team to defeat the Eagles in their two-year history, an 8 nothing loss earlier this season. The setback didn't sit too well with the Birds, and this time it's Scranton's defense, ready to put a zero on the board. We think they're going to try to run on us pretty much because they do have two good running backs who are right behind Frank Yannick and rushing in the league. Uh, but they do have a good passing game also, so we'll have to be looking out for both this weekend. Uh, Frank Yannick, the league's premier running back, knows what the offense will have to do to score against the tough Syracuse defense. We have to have a good passing game this week to really split it up to help us run. I think if, they, if we can't run, we won't win. Part two of the test will be for the Eagles fans. That's because the team with the best average attendance through the season gets to host the playoffs. We want it, and of course this will be a demonstration to the league that they'll come out and see Scranton play a quality team, such as, let's say, Syracuse. And uh, I think if they see that, there'll be no question that we'll have the, uh, the, the championship and maybe even the, uh, the playoff game in Scranton. The feeling is one of confidence at the Birds practice, confidence in the team's performance this Sunday against the Syracuse team and confidence they'll get the fan support they need and deserve to be number one in the nation. Thank you very much, Tim. Well, there's an unusual vehicle roaming Route 6 today. We'll fill you in on what's up as News Watch 16 continues. Sixteen Sports Final Friday on News Watch 16 Update. Finally tonight, you've probably heard along the way about those crazy stunts the fraternity brothers do, like swallowing goldfish or stuffing themselves into telephone booths. Well, Newswatch 16's Craig Stevens found some guys in Wyoming County who like good, clean fun, and they're really pushing this one. Seven young men with a dream and a bathtub are out to raise money for charity and gain worldwide fame. They're here on Route 6 in Wyoming County, all members of the Tau Kappa Epsilon fraternity who left the Cleveland State University in Ohio seven days ago. They're pushing a bathtub to New York City to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. They also want to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. They call this grueling 600-mile trip fun. You know, main reason, that's what keeps you motivated, keeps you going. No normal people is going to be sitting out here and running 10 miles a day with nothing around but cows and pastures and everything. It's like a vacation for us over the summer, you know, because I've been working all summer and I want to do something different. You know, the same with these guys, they've been working a lot too. And uh, the thing, just to get out and see the countryside, you know, being cooped up in the city, it's terrible. Do you have to have a screw loose to do something like this? A whole bunch. <laughs> Just not a couple, like I'm talking ratchet style. <laughs> you need two a box to lose today, not half of us up. <laughs> We're a little loose. Each runner averages about 10 miles a day when he's not riding or doing his version of water skiing. So far, the fraternity has raised $1,000 for St. Jude's. And if you think this stunt is crazy, next year these Teague brothers plan to roll a beer keg from Memphis, Tennessee to Cleveland, Ohio. Craig Stevens, Newswatch 16 on Route 6 outside Tunkhannock. Crazy guys. And that's Newswatch 16 for this Wednesday. Be sure to join us tonight on the update when we'll tell you about the people in Columbia County who are getting together after 138 years apart. ABC is next with World News Tonight. For the team, thanks for being with us and enjoy your evening. <laughs>